What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Saturday, April 6th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. It is our weekly recap. We appreciate you guys checking us out. Man, it's been a long week. It's been a crazy week. OPEC met. Um, you know, we also wow. saw dude, a lot of AI stuff going on. I mean, just a busy week, Stu. Oh, it was. <laughs> That's your little money thing. It, we absolutely whole, love it. it yeah, and um, the whole staff did a great job. Yep, staff always does a great job. Great interview release. Check out uh, the the interview we did with JT on the podcast yesterday, guys. We just ran that. Um, so please, let's take a look at that. Um, you can find that in the description below. And always check out all the links to the articles that we're about to cover in the weekly recap. Um, again, energynewsbeat.com. I'm going to give it up to the team, though. Let's see what's up first. Mounting losses mean Sweden's wind industry faces total financial collapse. I'll tell you, uh, this one is pretty um, amazing when you sit back and take a look. The total loss for the years 2017 through 2022 amounted to 13.5 billion just in losses in uh, the Swedish uh, uh, cor uh, corner, uh, which is 1.2 billion in um, uh, U.S. 13.5 uh, billion Swedish corner, uh, 1.2 billion in euros, which is a net loss margin of 39%. You can't operate a business for that long uh, by any stretch of the imagination for being 39% uh, of negative money. Since the economist's uh, initial findings, uh, Sweden's largest wind, wind farm installation of 179 uh, turbines is now facing bankruptcy uh, if, with millions of krona in debt. Uh, unbelievable. The losses are simply because the industry cannot produce electricity at a cost below market price, despite extensive subsidies. This would put any other industry out of business. If this was not mandated by uh, government and the force to quote unquote renewable energy. No, this is not market friendly at all. And when you take a look at the fact that these wind turbines are not recyclable, this is really devastating for the economy and the environment. Um, let me know what you think. Let us know, uh, share uh, in the comment sections. Let us know, reach out to us if uh, you see this, this trend happening around the world as we are. Solar panel waste to reach crisis levels in the next two to three years, and Australian experts warn. A uh, 12-year industry roadmap has been unveiled to address the rising amount of solar panel waste headed up for the trip. Uh, the solar panel is quickly approaching its tipping point. Uh, I'll tell you what, it already has. The amount of waste that they are, uh, solar panels are not recyclable. They are filled with hazardous materials and they are being improperly disposed and just put in land waste or put on ships and shipped to other countries. So the energy hypocrisy of the United States needs to not buy solar panels from child uh, abused uh, systems or wait until we can actually use solar panels that can be recycled. This is critical. How about the um, 3,300 acres of Texas wind farm solar panels that just got destroyed in a um, uh, a hailstorm. Those are now full headed to a landfill, and all of those three thousand three eight hundred acres are not even usable until reclamation can happen. 
uh, here is a quote. If we get this right, we can close this loop in a way that will underpin the Australian life for generations with the recovery and recycling of these precious metals and rare earth inside discarded end of life panels. I applaud this. Let's take a look at it. The federal government announced Friday in a $1 billion funding boost aimed at increasing the number of Australian made solar panels, which may increase the number of solar panels designed in a manner that makes recycling easier. Currently 90% of the Australia panels used in Australia are imported from China. Okay, you take a look at the $1 billion fund that they are going to be using. It is not going to be uh, technologically. This is, again, not solving the problem. Building solar panels that from materials that can be recycled is critical. And then being able to sustain power at market rates is unbelievably critical. So keep an eye on this. But again, the only thing that we've seen from the renewable industry is the wealth distribution and transfer of wealth. This has not been anything other than uh, taxing and then taxing from the taxpayers and going to the rich. And that's all this has been. And this may be something similar. I am all in on solar if it can be recycled. And uh, hopefully we're going to follow this to see if it does happen. Uh, BlackRock hit with cease and desist after allegedly misleading investors about ESG practices. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. The, the headline, the subheadline is the cease and desist order was issued by Mississippi, Mississippi Secretary of State Michael Watson. Michael. Quote, BlackRock made untrue statements of certain to its fund do not incorporate ESG considerations as detailed extensively in this order. BlackRock stated on multiple occasions, either expressly through publications or by action, the company does in fact incorporate ESG considerations in its non-ESG funds. <laughs> I think this is absolutely hysterical yep. that in ESG investing hypocrisy or come is coming from the folks that are yelling uh, about investing in green and trying to kill the fossil fuel industry. I just thought it was really pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, we, we love a good energy hypocrisy. I, I love the fact that it's completely now turned on its head. They were so far down the ESG rabbit hole, and now they're getting a cease and desist letter to stop. Um, <laughs> There's another... I think this is more of a show of, hey, we don't like BlackRock. Will this go anywhere? Will there maybe be some fines? Well, I don't this know, is, it... there's about 13 other states that have their states that are bailing out. Uh, $8 billion last week you and I covered out of Texas, you know, giving them the double barrel finger. And then notably, uh, re, uh, BlackRock just re recently withdrew from the Climate Action 100 Alliance. You and I talked about when is investor hypocrisy going to hit a uh, all-time uh um, like, hey, we need our money back here. I think we finally are finding out what that mark is. Yeah, no, absolutely. Good news and bad news for Pennsylvania. I'm full of good news. I'm a cheery kind of guy today. Electricity includes reduced CO2 emissions, but a higher cost for residents. Uh, here's the subtitle. According to a PECO report in Pennsylvania, reduced its carbon dioxide emissions by 10%, the largest year-on-year -year decline since 1990, but the cost of cents per kilowatt hour is higher than the national average. Rut row. Now, here's where the some stats come in. Pennsylvania is still highly dependent on natural gas 
uh, a fossil fuel for 59% of its electrical generation, more than the U.S. Uh, average. Uh, it should be 100%. You're literally in the heart of the Appalachia Basin. Why is it not 100 and and they want to know why uh, they um they they only get three point seven percent other than fossil fuels or nuclear. <laughs> it's brutal. The it's, only it's reason brutal. they reduced their CO two uh, is because of reducing coal plants. Yeah. Paco, which operates electric services to 1.7 million customers within Bucks, Chester, Delaware, Montgomery, Philadelphia, and York counties, is the largest electricity provider, and it's 45th in country in terms of renewables. <laughs> but, but also, there's this quote in here from Thomas Schuster, the only thing preventing Paco from supplying more affordable solar energy to its customers is the antiquated peel procurement, procurement process. process but yes so you're telling me it's an old procurement process that's slowing us from a four that's crazy to think about well we know solar doesn't pay off layer in an antiquated uh you know procurement process you know they're in trouble oh yeah um and and the only thing that's happening is the they get to pay for it uh, in the drive-thru. The cost of electrifying commercial truck fleet is one trillion. This doesn't even include the trucks. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this article. You can't buy this kind of entertainment. The charging infrastructure will cost $620 billion, according to a new survey from Clean Freight Coalition. That's not any of the other stuff. That's not the updates to the grid. That's nothing. I mean, that is just absolutely almost nothing. The study forecast infrastructure build out for the electrification of medium and heavy duty commercial vehicles, exposing what the CFC calls a massive investment gap. <laughs> massive investment gap. Huh. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's interesting, and, you know, let, I love this point down here. For example, you know, diesel trucks, again, you have to replace these trucks, too. So it's a trillion on everything but the trucks. Class 8 diesel costs about $180,000 compared to the battery truck, which is well over 400000 Exactly. So uh, now the, in, the Porculus Bill or the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, they spent, what, uh, $7 billion and got two or three in chargers installed. How in the world are you going to charge these bad dog trucks? You're going to have a boatload of batteries and you're not going to be able to charge them. This is absolutely hilarious. The study found that while medium duty vehicles uh, will face fewer roadblocks, economic and operational constraints make electrification very challenging for the heavy duty segment. I think it just means to be, it electrification is tough across the board. Oh, it is tough. I mean, you I could have told you that before we started this segment. Oh yeah. I just thought it was really pretty funny. There's a couple there in a statement also is clear that an industry with a yearly turnover of about $800 billion and a profit margin of around 5% cannot invest 620 without financial support in order to get it done. Really? Wow. This is this is like Oklahoma State kind of math here. Wow. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> uh, Buttigieg rejects critics of EV future, like people in the 2000s saying we would have landlines forever. I want to just give him a little bit. Hey, um, Mr. Buttigieg, if you are listening to this podcast, I would love to have you come on this podcast. I got a few questions for you. And when we sit back, I'm old enough to know, uh, A, I know Moses personally, but B, say, you're old enough, I'm this, you're old enough to, to, you go back a ways. Yes, I do. Uh, me and Moses are buddies. And when we sit back and take a look at whether or not, when did landlines come around? It was because of the market adoption and technology and so it was I, I mean i remember having a line phone line and it was a party line 
and everybody pig piles in uh can i do this and your neighbor up the hill was a psychopath and you didn't know what was going on let's get back to this story when america reports anchor sandra smith reported on cuts to the workforce for the ford 150 lightning in dearborn uh one third of the workers will remain big boys uh all of the you know all of the big boys are cutting out their ford their gm and the um uh union folks didn't do it biden killed union jobs what a chowderhead uh tesla is facing more competition as gm and ford and stellantis and other competitive players start to make the piece of the ev market i agree with you my uh michael I don't see Tesla losing out because uh, I people are going to buy a Tesla. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it is absolutely way to go, Tesla. Love me some Tesla. Well, I think what 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 he what he says is in the wake of declining Tesla sales. This is his quote. Let's be clear: the automotive sector is moving towards EVs, and we can't pretend otherwise. Hmm. I don't know if the overall broad are, are are Tesla's gaining market share. Yes, are EVs not as much as you would think. I think that's you know interesting. I love the you know we we love the the landline comment, but I mean it makes sense. I mean Buttigieg's got no clue what's going on. No, and and uh, I want to, uh, if uh, Miss Producer, if you could pull up this Tesla. Uh, I want me a Tesla cyber, cyber truck. truck. I want me a cyber. It is bulletproof. I need me a bulletproof car. That, Except that's right saying. here. Look, it's going through the water. It can't work. Beep, 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 beep. You know, you don't know. <laughs> um, this is kind of like Biden when he's doing a speech. <laughs> you know. Okay. Just,